I'm James Johnson, and you're watching Niagara Pro Tips. Welcome back to the Niagara Pro Tips videos. In this video, I'm going to focus on PX and Kludes. We'll talk a little bit about what they are and the basics, and then also demonstrate how to use variable words in your PX and Clude. PX and Clude files themselves can be located anywhere under the station, but typically I would create an Includes folder under my PX directory just to kind of organize things. When we look at the PX file that we intend to use uh, included in other PX files, we're going to think about a couple things with the design. First of all, the root element here probably needs to just be a canvas pane instead of a scroll pane. Also, when you look at your canvas pane settings, you probably want to consider things like what sort of scaling do we have turned on. And in this case, I probably want to have scaling set to none because this will be included in another PX file. And in this case, this might just be common information that I want to embed on all of my PX views in the system. So things like weather information, uh, hyperlinks to an alarm console or a history of the uh, web chart view or, or specific histories could be logos and also use this maybe to theme uh, the general design of your PX in the system. And the simplest way to uh, use a PX include in another PX file would simply be to go to a PX file like this equipment schedule PX here, which it happens to just have a scroll pane and a canvas pane in it. And we can then select our source PX file we drag and drop that and it creates a PX include widget. And you'll notice that when I look at the source PX file, all these different components are individual labels and, and different widgets, but the PX include is just one item in this uh, other PX file. So everything moves as one. You can position things consistently. You don't have to worry about things wiggling and moving around. And you have a single point source to go edit and modify this content on all your PX pages on the site. So that definitely reduces your engineering time and makes it more consistent about the graphics that you're going to run. So this is the real basics of using a PX include file, just dragging it in, dropping it into another PX file. Uh, taking a look at this floor plan graphic, we'll see that I have some different bound labels here, in particular uh, these two bound labels in my floor plan graphic. And when I take a look at the properties on the bound labels, we'll see some information. There's a bound label binding, which has an org that points to, in this case, the absolute slot path to the air handler. And then there's a hyperlink property, which also has an org. In this case, it's a relative org uh, to hyperlink to the graphic detail on that air handler. And then when I look at this other label, we'll see that there's also a, a number of bindings here as well. And we can see with the bound label binding, we have an ORD that points to the room temperature, a hyperlink that points to our air handler graphic. And we're using a spectrum binding to the room temperature to animate the background color uh, of the label. And we're also using a spectrum set point binding here, which also has an ORD on it. That, and that animates the set point uh, of that spectrum binding. So in this case, we have uh, four bindings or four ORDs that have to be configured on this label and two ORDs which have to be configured on the other label. And so if I were to duplicate these, then I would have to go edit six ORDs in order to uh, do that uh, for each of the duplicated labels. Now, we can do this a little simpler potentially using a PX include with uh, variable ORDs. And to do that, under my includes folder, I'll create a new PX file here. And maybe call this zone detail. And when I go to take a look at the PX editor view of my zone detail, first thing is I do have this scroll pane like I mentioned previously. So I'll probably want to cut the canvas pane and then I can delete the scroll pane and paste the canvas pane back into the root element. Then we're going to want to do a few things here. Uh, one is I probably want to turn my scaling to none in this case. And then I want to size this PX canvas just to be large enough to hold the content that I want to be able to drag and drop into another PX file. In my example, I'm going to set the width to 90 by 60 because that canvas size will be just large enough to um, include 
the two widgets that I want to show. So this is my uh, PX file up here, and then we can uh, go look at the uh, floor plan. I'm going to just copy and paste these widgets from the uh, floor plan, and I'll paste them into my zone detail PX file. And you can see uh, the ORDs over here are a mixture of some relative ORDs and some absolute ORDs. So how do we convert these over to variable ORDs? And unfortunately, there's not a button uh, in the PX editor up here like relativize and equalize, uh, but it's fairly simple to convert these ORDs. So uh, when we want to utilize this PX include file, whatever component we drag in from the tree will provide the base ORD. All we need to do is tell the uh, workbench and the PX editor that that base ORD is our variable, and then we need to specify any relative path uh, beyond that base ORD. So uh, in this case, I can take this entire absolute ORD to the air hammer, and I replace that with a dollar sign character, and then open and close parentheses, and then in the parentheses is going to be a variable name. And that variable name can be completely arbitrary, but in this case, the dollar sign zone is going to substitute for this entire absolute slot path. Now, when we look at the hyperlink property, uh, this one is using a relative ORD, but again, uh, that slot colon AHU underscore zero one resolves to that air hammer device that we're gonna be dragging from the component tree onto the PX. So this entire ORD gets replaced with dollar sign and a variable name. Now, the reality is uh, these two would have the same base, and uh, most likely I would use the same variable name, but I'm gonna use different variable names here just to provide some emphasis when we uh, deploy this solution. Taking a look at my other label then, I do have a number of these ORDs here. Uh, so this is gonna be very similar. Uh, and uh, again, I'm gonna use different variables here just for emphasizing this in the deployment side. So dollar sign and then say room temp or whatever the variable is that I want to call it. Now in this case there is some additional ORD that maps from that base component to the actual room temp and we're going to leave the remaining ORD there uh, at the end of our variable. And in this case it's important to emphasize or understand that with a relative ORD like slot colon points there's no uh, leading forward slash before the P in points but in this case uh, because it's going to be appending this to the end of the substituted ORD, we leave that uh, leading forward slash there on the rest of the ORD path. And we can uh, go ahead and change this out to just be my dollar sign link. And uh, we'll go ahead and do the same for this variable. Now again, these are arbitrary uh, variable names. They can be whatever you want them to be. So I can say peanut butter, for example, uh, and then for my set point here, we're going to replace everything up to and including uh, the air handler again. So we can say jelly here or whatever variable name that we want. So once we've uh, configured all of our ORDs to use variables to resolve the base component and specify any additional ORD, we have that configured uh, as we need. And in order to utilize this on our graphic instead of just dragging the zone to detail out like I showed by dragging the header px out the intention here would be that we would go select uh, multiple components most likely in the component space and then drag and drop these out onto the px editor and in this case uh, in the make widget wizard there is an option to include px file and we're going to go select my zone detail uh, PX in this case. And this is kind of where the magical part happens. You'll see this section that says select PX file variables to bind. And now we see all these individual variable ORDs that I defined in my source PX file. Uh, and again, normally I probably would have just used dollar sign zone for everything. So there would only be one variable listed here. Uh, but in this case, I could selectively bind certain ones or I can multi-select all of the variables that are in the source PX file. When I hit OK, it will add these as PX include widgets, so they move around together. And when we look at the properties on this uh, PX include, you'll see that there's a variables property here. And this just explains to you that all of these variables essentially 
map to the same, not essentially, they did map to the same base component. And uh, we see here on the left-hand side the before, and this base ord was then substituted for the variable. And in the cases where there was no additional ord specified, it's just that base component. But with the variable with the additional ords, it appends that uh, remainder of the ord to that. So this is saving me having to go manually edit those six ords on each of these, or four on this label and two on the other label, but six ords total on each of these, which will re reduce uh, fault, uh, you know, fat finger errors, and it also speed up the process of uh, dropping, dragging, dropping these labels out onto the a floor plan graphing, for example. And there's another uh, common use case for variable ords, and that is with maybe trying to build out equipment schedules. And I really do like component grids and people grids for uh, generating equipment schedules on graphics. However, there's cases where maybe you want a little more flexibility in your design, and this is a perfect use case for the uh, for DX Concludes with variable ords as well. And in this case, I have a uh, equipment schedule graphic here that I've created. That's where I've dropped my header PX Include onto. And when I take a look in my PX Includes folder here, I have a PX file called tableheader.px. And when I look at this, all this is is a canvas pane and it's sized just large enough to hold a bunch of different labels. And these are just labels with static text. So these are essentially the headers of my table that I wanna utilize. So in that case, I can just drag this out and create a, a PX file or PX include file um, on in my, uh, in my equipment schedule PX here. And that's just gonna be the, the column headers essentially of my, uh, of my table. And then when we look at the uh, pod row PX here, what we'll see again is it's a canvas pane with a bunch of bound labels. Now, in this case, each of these bound labels have variable ords all using a dollar sign zone in parentheses. So every one of the labels is using that same ord of dollar sign zone. And that points to the base of the air handler. And then some of these have the additional path to the different things that we want to show in the table of information. So going back to my equipment schedule graphic then, I can select all of my air handlers here and I can drag these out and drop them. And in this case, I'm going to select my odd row PX file, which has my variable ords. And there's only one variable called zone, I click okay. And that adds all of these uh, PX includes. And when I look at the variables, I can see that these variables all got uh, converted or mapped out to the absolute ords to the applicable component base that I dropped onto the PX uh, file. And uh, then if I want to maybe change things up just a little bit here, I can highlight or select the um, even uh, numbered PX includes and looking at the properties, there's an ORD property here. That's what points to the actual uh, PX file. So we can go into our PX directory and includes and I can pick the even row PX. Now, this is uh, essentially identical to the odd row as far as all the labels, bindings, and size. The only difference is the uh, background color is slightly different. So again, uh, allows you more flexibility in sort of building out table-based UI of an equipment schedule or things like that, where you don't have to go in and manually edit all these individual bindings on all these labels and it's just a quick drag and drop and it does the ord substitution with the variable ords. I hope you found that useful and stay tuned we'll do a second video with a little bit more complex examples where we utilize a value binding on our px include widget to be able to do some substitutions on the fly based on information in the station. Well thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos.